Good evening. Welcome to the February 21st, 2012 Washougal City Council meeting. If you would, please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Rose, could you call the roll, please? Council Member Russell? Here. Council Member Klinsky? Council Member Greenlee? Here. Council Member Lindsay? Here. Council Member McDaniel? Here. Council Member Shoemaker? Here. Council Member Freeman? Here. I understand Council Member Polinski is running just a couple minutes late this evening. Should be joining us shortly. Uh, under amendments to the agenda, I do have an executive session to add at the end of the meeting this evening after council member comments on property acquisition. Don't anticipate it to last very long with, uh, with no action required after that executive session. Are there any other amendments to the agenda? David? I'd like to pull uh, item H, bill, uh, agenda bill 10-12 for a discussion, please. Off the consent agenda? Second. Off the consent agenda? Yes. Okay, we'll do that as we get to the consent agenda itself. Are there any other amendments to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, uh, correspondence, Rose? I will have a, a public comment to read into the record shortly. Okay. In the second half. In the second half, I need to go retrieve it. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. With that, are there any members of the public who would wish to address council this evening before we get started? <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. If you would, come to the microphone. Give your name and address. My name is William Gladden. I live on 1137 43rd Street, Washington, Washington, for the high school. And the reason I came today is I uh, finally found out what the... Uh, the city water sewer and stuff was going to end up being 150% increase over the next four years, which totals out to a minimum cost of $274 for any single family dwelling. And a lot of the people I know that live in Washougal are above the $20,000 or $14,000 uh, exemption required, and they can't afford to pay $135 a month for city water and sewer, including myself. That escalates a price where people that are low income or single families, it's just not fair to them. Like I own my own house. I have my own house. I don't own it. But I'm paying for the guy that's, that has five kids or families that have four kids and stuff. And I'm only running uh, water for one person, myself and sewer. And I want to know, I want to know why this wasn't put out in a better format to the people of Washugo, why you didn't put out a, a mailing to everybody. I know you put it in the Columbian. I know it's on your website, but why didn't you do the ethical thing and put it out in a mailing to all the people of Washuga, letting them know the full force of what this is going to cost, 150% increase over the next four years. I know you put the little thing on the, the bill that says for this year, but why not be ethical and go above that and tell all the people in a mailing what it cost, 150%, because we can't afford it. And that's going to kick people out of their houses. And I suggest that you guys move to a CAMAS type of billing where your water bill is reflected with your sewer bill for the amount you use, not for the fact that I'm paying for somebody next door that has five or even two. They're using twice as much, but I'm going to pay for them too. And I think this council needs to do whatever they can to put a moratorium on any of that billing that they need to do right now and hold it off till this recession is over because we can't afford it. I can't afford a 30% increase a year. I, don't, I get 2% increase a year on my salary, and I still can't keep up. And it's just not fair to the people. You're, you're not looking out for the people of Washougal. You're not doing that. You know, it's, it's just not right. And I think I've made every point that I can that's, that's pragmatic to the decision that was made. You are not ethical about getting it out. You did the right thing by the law, but were you ethical in mailing out a mailing to every citizen of uh, Washougal, letting them know the full value of what this increase was going to be? And you did not do that because I've talked to a lot of people in Washougal and the stores and everything else. None of them knew about it. None of them know it's a 150% increase. That's, you didn't do the right thing. And you need to do the right thing when you're building. I, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Gladden. It, uh, 
actually a year and a half ago when the rates were brought up and the rate increases were voted in for the next five years, it was continually in the paper. I can't tell you that we sent a mailing to every single home. I can certainly tell you that if we sent a mailing to every single home, we still wouldn't have folks that knew that the rates were going to go up. It's just a fact of life that it happens. The, uh, the rates that were put in by the council, <coughs> excuse me, and staff are working on an annual basis to try and bring the actual rates in lower than those rates that were approved. Uh, the rates that were approved were ones to get the system to where it needs to be to come in line with state mandated regulations. And it's a fact of life that it needs to do that no matter what. I don't believe that it would probably cost any less if the state decided to close down our water and sewer system and have somebody else operate it on behalf of ourselves. I would believe that that's probably going to get more expensive. Um, your comment and suggestion in regards to a usage type of rate is under consideration now as being looked at to see if it comes in more feasible. More feasible for the people of Washougal or more feasible for what you want to do with the city? Doesn't, it doesn't matter, well, it's an easy statement to make. It doesn't matter to the council which way individuals are billed, whether they're billed on the same monthly basis for sewer and water or whether they're billed for what their actual usage is. Either way, the rates need to be reflective of what it takes to actually operate the system. How that's broken down but can be done a number of different ways. To, those rates also need to reflect the amount of usage by the people, not just a flat rate to, to kick mine up so that I'm paying the same as the person with a family. It's just not right. And you're going to put people on home. I guarantee you right now, three of them that I've talked to have said, I can't do this. I can't do this. Well, we can certainly, when the when that portion of that study is completed, we can certainly make sure and do our best job to get it publicized out there as far as widen as we can when that comes back to the council for their workshops and their deliberations. And I can just let you know right now, the people of Washu don't have a lot of faith in what the council is proposed with this. And that's just from so talking to people. Understood. That's an easy statement to make and unless individuals are here on a weekly basis and see the volume well, Believe of me, I tried to get them there. So, uh, but I, I still really believe it was unethical not to do a mail with every person in Washougal that was going to affect 150% increase on the sewer and water bill. You put it in the paper, that made it legal. You put it on your website, that's good. But the only billing you put on the bill coming to me was for that year. And that's the only increase I saw. Why didn't you send me a thing saying, your increase in the next five years is going to be a 150% increase. And then you would have seen how many people would have been here. And you know that's the truth. So that's all I have to say. And I, I really have a lot of distrust in what's going on right now after seeing this. Because I always thought, the city, that's why I moved here, faith in the city of Washoe. And that's been tempered quite a bit right now. Thank you for the time. I appreciate your comments, and I certainly would encourage you to be here for the weekly meetings to, to hear the volume of what the council goes through. It's the best way to be informed. Oh, I am now. <laughs> Are there any other members of the public that would wish to address council? Yes, Mrs. Terrell. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm, I must apologize if I ramble this time. I haven't had time to to um, work my thoughts into a logical order. Not to worry, Marilyn, we do need your name and address for the record. I'll do my best anyway. Oh, Ma Marilyn Terrell, 950 G Street in Washougal. I want to start out by saying that I know that this council represents the city of Washougal and has no authority or vote in uh, C-Trend, light rail, CRC, any of that stuff. I am, um, I, I was looking at the, at the website for the Columbian last night and I was appalled at the uh, response to T Tim Levitt's uh, letter. Uh, someone had written in something and he, he had responded that there, there were uh, quite a few factual errors and he was responding to that with what was the truth. And there were at least 20 letters there uh, that fell, fell into the categories of um, uh, light rail is a terrible thing, uh, Tim Levitt is uh, some sort of joke, and Levitt's only interested in it because he's going to make money from it. 
this isn't uh, uh, this sort of thing is far too important for us to be picking away at people uh, in a nasty manner. Uh, transportation comes from British Columbia to Mexico along that road. It's important to us. It's more important to all of the people in the western states and provinces than it is to the people of you know little old Washougal here and uh, I'm I've been attending um, the, um, the the elderly what do they call it the Council on Aging meeting, meetings that the um, county held council member Poston and I went to almost all of them uh, transportation is an extremely important item for all of us and looking at you all, uh, all of you all will be part of the aging process as it goes on. Uh, um, getting around is going to be extremely important. It is important now but it's going to be worse because very few of us are going to get to the stage where we're still driving when we're going into the old folks home or whatever's going to happen to us. Included in that thought for me is the fact that there is land east of the port which is going to be developed. It would be really lovely to have a Fred Meyer etc etc as I have my automobile and I can get there but in the far distant future when you're talking about this land and putting in your two cents worth to what the port is going to do, I hope you will all consider that we need other places around town where, where people can get in. This town is long and skinny mostly or it's way up there uh, and um, putting all these elements of transportation together I think are going to be very important. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. And just so you remember, we do have votes through CTRAN. Uh, Council Member uh, Freeman sits on the CTRAN board for both Washougal and Camas. Yes, I understand that, but as uh, Council Member Freeman was reminded, uh, the big guys have the big votes. <laughs> they have a number of votes, that's for sure. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Terrell. Any other members of the public wishing to address Council? Okay. Moving on to Can I the address, correspondence. Am I allowed to address that? Sure, if you want to take a second. Um, it, the same thing with the CTRAN board. Um, board meetings, public's welcome. So if you have input you'd like to share, uh, they meet once a month on the second Tuesday of each month. What's that? Um, it varies, actually. Usually it's at 6. This coming month, it has to, they have to change the date completely and the time. But normally, 6 o'clock at their headquarters. Uh, yes. Is that 63rd? Yep. I don't know. My car just gets there. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Gard, I'm Rose? prepared yes. to read a statement into the record from Jared Adams, 905 A Street, Washougal. Mayor Garden City Council. On Monday, February 13th, Governor Greg War signed Senate Bill 6239. This bill allows gays and lesbians the same right to get married in Washington that all the other citizens currently have. This bill allows me the right to get married in my home state once I'm ready to do, to do so. I respectfully ask that you and all the citizens of Washougal refuse to sign refer Referendum 74 and allow this law to take effect. Should it appear on the ballot in November, in November, I ask that you vote to approve it. Thank you, Rose. Uh, moving on to the consent agenda, this evening we have a consent agenda comprised of the <coughs> council minutes of February 6, 2012, our workshop minutes of February 13, 2012, regular accounts payable claims in the amount of $687,749.77, Agenda Bill 6-12, authorizing the mayor to sign the Thiessen Krupp Elevator Maintenance Agreement Professional Services Agreement for the Social Services Building. Agenda Bill 7-12, authorization for the mayor to sign a professional services agreement number four with Parsons, Parsons Brinkerhoff for the Transportation Capital Facilities Plan. 
Agenda Bill 8-12, authorizing the mayor to sign a supplemental professional services agreement with Wallace Engineering for the wastewater treatment plant storage building project. Agenda Bill 9-12, authorizing the mayor to sign a professional services agreement with Christopher Dumb for secondary public defender services. And Agenda Bill 10-12, authorizing the mayor to sign an interlocal agreement with CAMAS extending the ex existing agreement regarding EMS services in fire department trial consolidation. <clears throat> I understand we want to pull item number H from the consent agenda to the regular agenda. Are there any other items? Mr. Mayor, I ask unanimous consent that we approve the consent agenda items A, B, C, D, E, F, and G as read. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Uh, moving agenda bill 10-12 to the regular agenda. <clears throat> An interlocal agreement with the city of Camas for the continued provision of emergency medical services and advanced life support ambulance transport services, trial consolidation of the fire departments and evaluation of the EMS system. Chief Schumacher. Yes, uh, this interlocal agreement with the city of Camas for the continued provision of EMS and ALS ambulance transport services, trial consolidation of the fire departments and evaluation of the EMS system. The cities of Washougal and Camas and East County Fire and Rescue are parties to an agreement for the provision of emergency medical rescue and licensed ALS transport services. Additionally, Camas and Washougal are parties to an agreement for supplemental EMS services and trial consolidation which expires at the end of February 2012. The trial consolidation of the departments has resulted in a <coughs> decrease in expenditures while at the same time <coughs> providing a higher level of service within our community. This agreement extends the supplemental EMS provisions and fire department consolidation until December 31st, 2013. The recommended action is authorize the mayor to sign the interlocal agreement with CAMAS. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Councilman Shoemaker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think this is a great idea. I plan to support it tonight. Uh, unfortunately, uh, one of the major reasons that we're doing this is that uh, we've got a structural deficit in our EMS budget. And uh, that's our ambulance service. This plan was partly conceived as a, as a partial remedy for that. Uh, what I haven't seen so far is the plan to make up that structural deficit. Uh, the consolidation is going to put off the problem until uh, 2013 or 2014. It's a little hard to tell at this point. But beyond that, we've still got the same old structural deficit. So I'm going to support this thing tonight. I appreciate the work our professionals are doing on it. But I regret to say this is the last time I'm going to support one of these votes until I see a plan on how we fix the structural deficit. And I've been encouraged along those lines by the administration, and I appreciate that. I know you're going to bring one forward. Um, there was one question I had, though. On the EMS levy transfer, uh, it was listed in the summary of, of the interlocal agreement. What is that dollar amount? And my apologies, Dave, for not giving you that question in advance. If you don't know, um, an estimate will do, and if you don't have an estimate, that's fine. I'm it, trying to do the math quickly in my head. Um, <coughs> a dime is roughly 300 or 120,000. So these transfers are on the order of three or four hundred thousand dollars annually to Camus, and I'm, I may be off plus or minus a little bit there. I believe when we were doing the uh, the the discussions back in the spring of 2011. The figure was in the 450,000 range per year of what the tax brings in to that system. Right. And we're going to give 50% of that to Camus. No, that's the amount that goes to Camus. We that's collect much more than that. Okay. Right. It's and about we do that because they're basically furnishing the ambulance service. Um, they furnish the paramedics and a majority of all of the equipment, the train that goes with it. We retain an additional 25 cents total. Right. We have a 50 um, cent EMS levy and a 10 cent levy lid lift. We send 25 cents of the 50 cents and all of the lid lift to Camus. 
The rest of it we retain in order to keep uh, our number of firefighters at a minimum level to be first responders and also to assist in the training of, of those uh, firemen. But CAMAS, certainly since they uh, administer the contract and have the responsibility of all the training, all the stocking, all the rolling stock, everything along the way, that's the reason that they get all the, the additional amount, similarly from East County Fire and Rescue. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Thank you, Dave. I move that we, uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we authorize the mayor to sign the interlocal agreement with CAMAS. Second. <clears throat> I've got a motion and a second to authorize the mayor to sign the interlocal agreement with CAMAS for EMS and ALS services. Any council discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to mention one thing. I'm partway through a document that's about that thick on, uh, that gives a whole lot of information about emergency services in Clark County and the potentials for uh, merging or creating fire authorities on, on scales that range from countywide to Camas and Washougal. One of the things that I think is, is striking about what I've read so far is that the uh, EMS response and the EMS coverage within Camas and Washougal is uh, well above the average for the rest of Clark County. And so uh, one of the questions that you always have when you set up here is, are, are we getting what we're paying for? And uh, at least from what I've been reading, I think we are. Council comments, questions? Okay, we've got a motion and a second to authorize the mayor to sign the interlocal agreement with CAMAS in regards to EMS and ALS services. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving to agenda bill 11 12, request for an easement from Liberty Land and Development, setting a public hearing. Mitch? Thank you, Your Honor, City Council. Uh, again, the Agenda Bill 1112 is a request to grant an easement, or it's to set a hearing to, for a request to grant an easement across open space that was dedicated to the City of Washougal with the Riverview Terrace subdivision. Uh, in September of 2004, the subdivision known as Riverview Terrace Phase 1 was recorded, and as part of that recording, a tract of land was dedicated to the City of Washougal for open space, wetland preservation, and stormwater purposes. This track in question is located on the perimeter of the plat adjacent to property within the city of Camas and owned by Liberty Land and Development, which is Exhibit B within your agenda packet. In 2006, Liberty Land and Development approached the city to request that the city grant an easement for ingress, egress, and utilities across the open space portion of the track previously dedicated to the city of Washougal. When city staff was approached, oh, excuse me, this, this proposed easement would serve one single family residence. When city staff was approached with regard to permitting this easement, staff gave a favorable, favorable response in writing. After receiving this favorable response, Liberty Land and Development performed a boundary line adjustment and they surveyed the area of the proposed easement. And these are exhibits C and D within your uh, agenda packet. They also obtained an appraisal for the easement area, which stated its value at $2,000. Subsequently, it was determined that the appropriate process for considering this easement request was a legislative decision and state law made provisions for this contained in RCW 5817-225. This statute gives the city council the authority to grant such an easement, not city staff. Therefore, on October 1st, 2007, a public hearing was scheduled and held before city council to decide this issue. Public testimony was taken with regard to the proposed action of granting the easement. Washougal citizens joined the developer of the Riverview Terrace in raising concerns, among other things, over decrease in property values and lack of protection of the open space. The hearing was continued to October 15, 2007, at which time a motion was made by City Council to grant the easement. However, there was no second of that motion and the motion died. Today, Liberty Land and Development, through their attorney, are now again asking the current City Council for consideration of the same easement pursuant to RCW 5817-225. The recommended action is to set a public hearing for March 19th, 2012 at 6 p.m. 
Thank you, Mitch. Uh, before we go to Council, Leanne, is there anything you'd like to address Council with? <clears throat> Members, I'm Leanne Bremer, representing the uh, developer applicant uh, here this evening, Liberty Land and Development. Uh, Mitch summarized it perfectly, and uh, we were here, or my client was here a number of years ago making the same request, and we'd like the opportunity to address council on March 19th and, and uh, make the same request again and, and with some more uh, information and reasons why this. Uh, it's not detrimental to the city at all. It's only to serve one single family lot. It avoids any wetland area or wetland buffer. Uh, it goes across the open space that's owned by the city of Washougal. And it uh, accesses a public road to, to the proposed lot. And, and the, in case it's not clear in the materials, the reason why this particular lot cannot be served from the south is because of uh, steep topographical uh, uh, factors. Thank you, Leanne. Mm -hmm. Council, questions, comments? John? Uh, a couple questions, and you may not be able to answer it tonight, but uh, what is this land zoned in by Camas? Is it residential or is it otherwise? It's residential. It is residential, okay. Uh, the, question, the other question I have is what uh, safeguards does Camas have in place so that this development doesn't turn into a bed and breakfast. I know we laughed about that um, you know, in conversation, but um, you know what? You know these these residents up there have already dealt with that issue and uh, would not like to see that happen again. I'm not so. familiar with their uh, code and how it uh, regulates bed and breakfast. Right. Uh, I think from a recent action, um, it goes through somewhat of a legislative process because it had to go to their planning commission as well. So, um, unlike ours, which is administrative, or excuse me, which is a conditional use permit hearing through a hearing examiner. Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments, motions? Do we not hear a motion to bring it forward on the 19th? Uh, I bring a motion to set the public hearing. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Any other council discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. We have a roll call vote, please. Council Member Freeman? Aye. Council Member Shoemaker? Aye. Councilmember McDaniel? Aye. Councilmember Lindsay? No. Councilmember Greenlee? Nay. Councilmember Plinsky? Aye. Councilmember Russell? Aye. Motion carries. We will have a public hearing on March 19th. Thank you, Leanne. <clears throat> Moving to agenda bill 12 12, a resolution to develop and plan for a regional fire protection service authority and to establish a regional fire authority planning committee. Uh, Dave or Chief, which one of you are going to take this one? <coughs> Both of you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, what you have before you is Agenda Bill, agenda bill 12-12, um, a resolution to develop and plan for a regional fire protection service authority and establish a regional fire authority planning committee. Uh, a resolution authorizing the mayor to develop a plan for a regional fire protection service authority, including but not limited to the cities of Camas and Washougal, and to establish a regional fire authority planning committee. Washougal is currently operating under agreement with the city of Camas for emergency medical service and a trial consolidation of fire departments. To determine the best option for delivery of fire and emergency medical service for the community, all options should be evaluated. One such option provided by the state legislature is establishment of a regional fire authority, otherwise known as an RFA. To explore this option, an RFA planning committee must be established. The establishment of an RFA planning committee and the development of a service plan does not commit Washougal to any specific action. The res resolution additionally charges the planning committee with evalu evaluating other rel relevant options. The recommended actions is to read the resolution by title only, pass post the resolution in the usual manner. 
Thank you, Chief. Dave, anything to add? I just would add, uh, Mayor and Council, that uh, there's one subtle difference between what we had in workshop last week and um, what is in your packet this week, the resolution that's before you. And that was the last one of the last items that the chief mentioned about um, the additional charge to the planning committee that uh, they not only be evaluating a, and preparing a possible service plan for an RFA, but they, that they look at other relevant options. Uh, and that was uh, some language that we worked with Camus on. It basically leaves all of the options open, and it doesn't constrain the planning committee to just looking at the RFA, although that is the formality that the statute requires. It just gives them the additional charge. Um, uh, that, other than that, it's identical to what you had before you last week. Thank you. The resolution also includes um, recommended members of the council for that planning committee, uh, council member Russell, council member Shoemaker, and council member Freeman, who are the members, uh, current members of the uh, city's public safety committee. Uh, the appointments committee met just prior to this meeting, and those, that is the recommendation coming forward as long as those individuals are willing to serve on that, uh, that committee. So with that, I will turn the item over to council. I ask unanimous consent to read the resolution by title only. Hearing no objection, so ordered. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Washougal, Washington, authorizing the Mayor to develop a plan for Regional Fire Protection Service Authority, including but not limited to the cities of Camas and Washougal, and to establish a Regional Fire Authority Planning Committee. Mr. Mayor, I move that we pass and post the resolution in the usual manner. Second. I've got a motion and a second to pass and post the resolution in the usual manner. Council discussion? John? <clears throat> this will be an interesting journey. And, uh, you know, as, a, as it stands right now, I have concerns of, you know, the going down the road of creating a, another government entity. Um, and at the same time, if it does bring uh, substantial cost savings and, um, and to our cities and the ability to have those kind of uh, services provided through an authority, I think it's worth investigating and looking into. So uh, it is, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this all develops. Any other council? Okay, I've got a motion and a second to pass and post the resolution in the usual manner. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Takes us to Agenda Bill 13-12, a resolution endorsing the use of E-Verify and opposing state legislation to the contrary. Uh, Dave or Don, which one of you wanted to take that one on? Council before you uh, is a resolution uh, regarding recent uh, proposed legislation at the state legislature, House bill, that would have preempted uh, local government's ability to use E-Verify in the way that we currently do and, and some other communities do. As you uh, are aware, that bill didn't survive the last cutoff date in the House, and so I, right now it, it's, it's a dead bill and not an issue at the legislature. However, um, the Council has expressed uh, and the administration has expressed concern about uh, that particular legislation or any future proposed legislation that would be preemptive in that way. And so this uh, proposed resolution simply states the council's uh, preference that um, there not be legislation that would so preempt and that we would be able to utilize E-Verify uh, under our own discretion locally. And so the recommended action is to read the resolution by title only and then to uh, pass the resolution. Thank you, Dave. We did uh, immediately after the, well, the next morning after our last uh, workshop session, we did send an email to all six of our uh, Southwest delegation. And I believe we got three responses that they would be not be voting in favor of the measure should it come forward to them. Those responses came in fairly immediately. So that, uh, that communication did go out. Uh, Council, what would be your pleasure with the resolution, whether you care to go forward with it and still put it in place or allow it I, to go? 
just a point of clarification. If we were to pass this resolution, um, the chances of this coming back in the next session are probably just as great as they were this session. So would this be something we could just reissue um, when the new legislat legislature comes in instead of having yep. to pass another one? I mean, yep. just something we could just... Absolutely. Uh, Don, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe any resolution that's passed by the council is held in, no in force unless yeah, we... Unless it's yeah. Right. So. And it says, uh, it's very <clears throat> simple. It says, you resolve as follows. The city of West Eugle opposes adoption of HB 2568 or other similar legislation. So I think it would carry into future sessions. Thank you. David? Boy, I hate to disagree with my colleagues on this, but uh, I'd like to see this thing go forward. Uh, the first step in stopping somebody from stepping on you is telling them that you don't appreciate them stepping on you. And this is an attempt by Olympia to run the city of Washougal, and I object to that. And so I'd like to forward this thing immediately to let them know that this is an example of the type of treatment we don't, we don't appreciate and to put them on notice that we'd appreciate it if they wouldn't do it again. Thank you, Mr. Bird. You bet, Dave. I find to vote on other similar legislation too broad. I object to that. So I would be opposed to this. Other council comments, questions? Uh, I've expressed a number of concerns about E-Verify in the past. Um, rather than spend a lot of time on them, my greatest concern is that people who are United States citizens or who do have residency permits are blocked out of the system. The error rate, especially for women who are married or divorced or people who change their names legally, the paperwork delays in the Social Security Administration run 14 months at best. That's an awful long time to sit on unemployment because you can't get a job because you can't get through E-Verify, even though you are a citizen. Even Homeland Security admits that the majority of mistakes that they make in turning people down are, are in fact, people who are citizens. The other problem is the other side of the, of, of the, of the statistics. They're only estimates, but Department of Homeland Security says that their best guess is that over 50% of the illegal immigrants who would apply for E-Verify would be approved because they have adequate documentation. It's false, but it is adequate to make it through the system. The Chamber of Commerce of the United States sued the federal government to prevent the impl implementation of E-Verify. That's not exactly a bleeding heart liberal organization. I just don't believe that, e I think that E-Verify is a bill of goods which does not and cannot provide the services which it is advertised to do because primarily it depends upon Social Security Department records which are out of date, inaccurate, and with completely inadequate staff to maintain them. So I don't see this as a good thing. John? Um, 
the Chamber of Commerce nationally has been well known for protecting businesses that hire illegal workers. So it's not a, it's not uncalled for that they would be against you verify. Uh, but let's get back to what the really the heart of this is, which is our city. When we go out for contracts, we actually get a lot of contractors who come and they put bids down for different contractual agreements. And when they do, we just ask them that they e-verify their employees to make sure they are legal workers. And if they are not legal workers, then they do not qualify for the bid. Uh, it is something that um, Pierce County is doing, something that Clark County, Vancouver, a lot of the major cities in the, uh, in the state of Washington are using uh, to weed out those contractors who aren't playing by the rules. And um, I think it's a good thing for our city. I'm glad we're involved with it. Uh, and the system itself is only going to get better with time. Um, but it is, well, you laugh, but I mean, I'm surprised that you actually quoted Homeland Security after you called them Department of Insecurity. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of shocked that you would actually use their, uh, a statement by them. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, it is a good thing. And it, it puts extra safeguards on how we spend our tax money to make sure it is going to those legal companies that are operating here. Well, it seems that Social Security is the only way to track an employee. We all have to show Social Security cards. So I see that it may have a flaw in the system because people can buy falsified papers. But that isn't going to change that. Us passing E-Verify for our city, uh, people that work for our city, uh, that's not going to affect that. The system for Social Security has been hurting for a long, long time. So tonight's not the night to fix Social Security. It's just a night for E-Verify, in my opinion. So I would be for it. Joyce? I think the system, whether it has flaws or not, uh, should be not mandatory uh, because it's just another way of the government forcing itself into private business. I make a motion to um, was it pass and post this resolution? Oh, do it by title only? Okay. I, I make a motion to read by title only. Second. Got a motion and a second to read the resolution by title only. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion no. carried. Oh. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Washougal, Washington, endorsing the successful use of E-Verify in the City of Washougal. Make a motion to pass, uh, pass and uh, post this in the usual manner. Second. second. I've got a motion and a second to pass and post the resolution in the usual manner. Any further council discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Dave. Um, would the council entertain an amendment to forward this, uh, to add to the things that we're going to do here, to forward this thing to Olympia, uh, to the governor, to let her know how we feel about it? We, we would be... Uh, my intent was, should you pass this this evening, that it would go to the, uh, the members of our legislature, and we could certainly include the governor's office on that I as well. I would my amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other council discussion? Okay, I've got a <coughs> motion and a second to pass and post the resolution in the usual manner. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Russell? Aye. Councilmember Plinsky? Aye. Councilmember Greenlee? Nay. Councilmember Lindsay? Nay. Councilmember McDaniel? Aye. Councilmember Shoemaker? Aye. Councilmember Freeman? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to the second opportunity for any members of the public that wish to address council this evening. Anyone else in the public? Rod, welcome. Mr. Mayor, my name is Rod Morris, 4050 Addy Street, Washougal. Council members, uh, I have some questions that I would like to have asked about these uh, things that were brought up about the fire department mergers. 
And so I don't know that there's an answer tonight, but at least it's something that I would like you guys to ask about. In the, the presentation that was given to us last Monday uh, at the workshop, there were uh, seven uh, combinations of uh, departments that had joined an RFA. Uh, if I talked to Larry Wagner, who's on the Washington State Firefighters Association, there's many that have failed. And at least I would like to see why those failed. If we're going to talk about this thing and look at both sides of it, and I want to know why the other ones failed, what was the common denominator within that organization when they put it together? Everything here sounds like it's all hunky-dory. I have to say with the gentleman in the back here, the working relationships, I, I, I was wrong when, I, when we started into this process. The working relationship has worked out quite well. But I still don't see where, when we have only seven in the state that have joined, uh, why is it that it's not a larger number within the state? There must be something that's not right or it, or it doesn't feel well or something. There must be some reason out there. The other thing that I don't want to have happen here is, is that uh, when it asks the questions to ask, are we considering an RFA for the benefit of our citizens? Are we considering an RFA to gain efficiencies for the benefit of our citizens? Or are we considering an RFA to improve, improve the overall level of service, standards of cover, and enhance services for the benefit of our citizens? And I, and I think that's great that we look at that. But the fact of the matter is, what some of the things that we've done so far, we've moved a training captain up to Station 42, that doesn't necessarily mean it's better for the citizenry. That's, that's what, that is a, de a departmental thing that's, that's happening. And so with, with uh, Chief Schumacher says, well, I've got five guys in the fire station every day, or at least at a minimum of four. And the other is that I, if we have a structure fire, well, that's fine in the event that they're sitting there. But 60% of the time, they're there. 40% of the time, they're transporting, they're exercising, they're doing whatever in canvas. And so I, I think that we need to take a look at that. We don't ever see an ambulance move to cover, and uh, the example that I say for that was that AMR, when they're, they're, their people in their ambulances move all the time, and they, and they move them to where their, their statistics say they have the largest call volumes. And so my question is, is that, and it's just that, why can't these ambulances be moving to cover better than they are? And if, if there's no better coverage, then move them all back to Kansas. Um, the overtime issues that are being saved, I've noticed in here that uh, one of them had uh, $10,000, I think it was, on the savings from the city here. And it doesn't seem to me that when there's at least $130,000 difference, a 10% of coverage or, or a savings is not a great deal. So again, back to what Councilman Shoemaker said is, we got to talk about number dollars and and figures out there because right now it, it, I'm just wondering what's going to happen if the assessed evaluation doesn't change or are we are we still going to be there in 2013 or 2014 wondering how we're going to supply uh, uh, funding for this thing another question that I have is that uh, on the uh, white sheet that, that you guys got that said uh, what is the art process for an RFA well, in one of them, it says, what revenue sources are available to an RFA, and what are the limitations and estimated amounts for each source? Uh, second bullet down, an RFA regularly, regular levy is limited to $1.50 per assessed value, 1,000 assessed evaluation. But what is a benefit charge when we talk about what's the benefit charge that they can bring into this? So we're going to talk about EMS levies. We're talking about the monies that would be brought in by consolidation. But what's the, what's the benefit charge? And, I, and that I don't know. So with that, I'll, I'll wait till you guys bring back some more answers, and then we'll, we'll talk some more. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Rod. I think, Chief, can you make sure, I think Rod brings up a good point in regards to um, any of the RFAs that have, have actually failed in the state and why, um, but also if we can glean any information from those that just didn't even move forward. Um, like there are three or four of them that we know of that went through the process but never consummated the entire process. So. Yes, the ones I heard of are the three or four that put the planning committee together and never went any further than that and never went before the voters. Um, I'll check into whether which ones have failed. Though. Yeah, if we, can, if we can get just short histories of those, if, if they can tag it to one or two items that, that couldn't settle out, that That's would good. be great. 
Are there any other members of the public? Mrs. Gard. You definitely do not look like my wife, Kevin. Sorry. Uh, Kevin Bergstrom, 1210 Northeast 277th Avenue. Uh, it's a Fern Prairie address. Um, I just wanted to come in front of council tonight and say thank you. Uh, it's, it's good to hear some comments you made. Uh, it's good to see some uh, movement on a couple of those items. Uh, I wanted to especially address a comment by council member Greenlee. Uh, I appreciate the remarks and I'd like to say that I too am reading that same document uh, and it's, it's, it has a lot to say about fire authority uh, and consolidation in Clark County. And it does specifically address some of the uh, likelihoods in Camas and Washougal. And in speaking with the folks that wrote that document, I do know that they believe that the highest likelihood of success is Camas and Washougal. And so that's encouraging to us as we move forward. Um, and I would actually like to thank Council Member Shoemaker for his comments. Um, what I heard in pulling that agenda item and putting in front of you all to make those comments tonight was uh, almost a holding uh, the feet to the fire of the administration on uh, providing the proof. And I think it's been to this point a very collaborative effort uh, between administration, the workforce, and, and council to the degree that they're able to. Um, and I think that to address that, the two-year extension was the window that they need to provide that proof. I think the the uh, shortfall or uh, the uh, structural deficit as you define it um, that existed at the beginning of last year of to the tune of three hundred and some odd thousand dollar for a one-year uh, EMS levy um, was virtually erased in one year and that's due in part to the consolidation so until we more fully consolidate these we won't know what savings there are so thus we wouldn't know what structural deficit is left to exist um, I'm inclined to believe that, you know, as long as we're transparent as we have been to this point, uh, structural deficit will probably be addressed very soon now that you've uh, taken that step forward, and I appreciate that. Um, secondly, I'd quickly like to address some of uh, Rod's comments. Um, as far as fire authorities go, I do have some experience in this over the last, what, five years or so now. I do know that uh, I had some questions when the uh, chiefs brought that proposal, or not the proposal, but the presentation in front of you uh, a month or so ago. I know of well more than seven agencies that have entered into a fire authority in Washington State. Um, so their, their information may have been dated, I, I can't say. I do not know of any fire authorities that were formed and then dissolved. There are none that I know of. Um, what I do know of, there have been some planning committees formed and then they've stepped away from the process. We're all familiar with that happening right here in our own community. So not unusual, um, but I don't know of any that have formed and then dissolved. So just thought I'd throw that out there. And I, I echo Rod's comments, the working relationship has been uh, better than even I expected. I knew that it would be good and I knew that we needed to prove that out. But uh, so far, it's been very good. So thank good. you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Mrs. Gard. <laughs> Angar, 4813 K Street, Washougal. Um, <clears throat> first question that I have for council is on e -verify. I've read a lot of different things, watched a lot of news programs on the e -verify, trying to understand what's the big deal. I understand your comment, John, about the city. Does that mean even if you award $1 contract to somebody, you're going to ask them to go through the e-verify process? Uh, no, not yet. Right now, it's only uh, it's what 250 is the 100,000 is the threshold. So it's going to stay at 100,000. Uh, maybe not. We're requesting that it come back and go to zero. And go to zero. Well, my my other question to you is is that you all have stressed in some way or form that you don't want government to control what you do. Yet, E-Verify is something that is controlled by the government. So, which is it? Are you going to stand up and not have the government tell you what to do? Or are you going to make decisions for yourselves within the city of Washougal and that affects the city of Washougal? There are many jobs out there that 
some people don't want to do. And our farmers are a big piece of that. And they probably do have majority legal workers. But again, they're probably amongst the majority that Councilman Greenlee and Lindsay talked about that are working through a system that isn't perfect. Thank you. Any other members of the public that wish to address council? Ms. Terrell. Um, the subject again is E-Verify. I think E-Verify is just plain mean. Uh, it is a way for the government to control uh, the people. Uh, we are un under such government control now that if we had a Vietnam War and the guys wanted to run away to Toronto, they couldn't do it. There's no way you could get across the border these days uh, without using by dark of night or, or what so, so matter. Uh, I don't see what harm it does to the city of Bank of, of Washougal that um, some contractor has some guys working for him who are not kosher. It's an opportunity for him to put his heel on their neck and say, if you don't do what I tell you or work for these sub, sub wages, I will see that you're kicked out. Um, I think it's a, a mean law. I think we have a lot of mean laws these days. Um, and I agree with Mrs. Gard that there are a lot of farmers who, who um, are getting ri get ri ridden, written up, who are plowing their fields down or letting the apples rot on the trees or whatever's going on because it's hard work. Thank you, Marilyn. Any other members of the public wishing to comment? Moving on to Mayor's report, I have uh, really just one item for you this evening. I was honored uh, this last week to attend our firefighters, volunteer firefighters uh, dinner put on by the Mason's Lodge here in, in uh, Washigal. And it was nice to see a gathering the size that it was with all of the families and the new generations coming up. And uh, congratulations for three volunteer firefighters of the year, uh, former council member Morris, who was voted as one of those. Uh, another longtime city employee and volunteer fireman, Myron Crumpacker, and also Mike Heyer. Um, it was gratifying that evening as well to see firefighter Heyer's son also sworn in as a new volunteer firefighter for the city of Washigal, uh, making that family uh, a third generation Washigal volunteer firefighter family. So that was, was nice to see wonderful awards for the, uh, the volunteers that were there. Items from council members. Joyce? Well, uh, I'd like to also say, uh, uh, commend the Masonic North Bank Lodge number 182 for hosting the dinner for our volunteer firefighters. It was a nice event. Um, I ha would like to request an agenda item. First of all, I want to commend Joanne Boyce and Trevor Evers on the work that they have done on the long-term strategic plan for Washougal. I think this information is very important for our community. I would like at the next workshop for each member of our city council to talk about their goals for Washougal. We have all been elected, some more recently than others, and I think it would be good as council members for, we, for us to discuss how we feel about our city. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Other members of council? Paul? I just wanted to mention that I um, sat through a webinar uh, this morning uh, on economic development attacking the problem as what they call asset-based rather than needs-based. There's a whole lot of economic development that goes on that's needs-based in which we say, well, we're missing this and so how do we get it? Or another way of thinking about it is what grant can we get? How can we go outside of ourselves to get money? And what happens when you when you do that is that you're fitting into the grant plan rather than what's good for you. 
asset base tends to take a much more positive approach and it says here's what we have and this is what how can we leverage what we have into something even better one of the examples that was given was Arista County Maine which is the northernmost county in Maine uh, they had surprisingly enough lost a timber and wood products industry over the years and so then they started to think about what could they do one of the things that they observed was that they were almost all of the homes and businesses were heated by oil which is obviously imported into Arusa County at the tune of about four hundred and fifty million dollars a year after only two years they had cut that by a third by using creating economic incentives to create the mill structure the transportation structure and then going out and creating incentives for individual homeowners to replace their oil fired fired furnaces with wood pellet stoves an amazing story and because there was lots of wood waste available in Arista County that was the, one of their assets they had a number of others so I just wanted to encourage everyone in the room to start thinking about what is it about our community that is an asset that's you if not unique that's at least indigenous here and it, it needn't be just with Shugal. It certainly should include Camas. In fact, it could include Clark, Clark County. It could include the entire metro area. But I would really encourage people to start thinking about what is it about this place that makes an asset that we could begin to leverage into economic development. And I'd love to hear some ideas from anyone. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. John? I just want to address some of the comments towards you verify real quickly. Um, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about mean, um, I think it's mean when a contractor hires illegal workers to undercut people who are working here legally. That's mean. Um, it's 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 mean when those contracts get awarded to those contractors, and our guys that are here and doing things by the books don't even get a shot at it. Um, you know, it's not about more government. What it is about is upholding the laws that are on the books. And E-Verify is the best way for us to do that, that we have right now. We could go through the old system, um, going through the HR departments and do it the old ways. But the fact is there's no other accountability m metrics that is out there besides E-Verify that does it as quickly and as free as it does. So E-Verify is the best um, tool that we have to identify those contractors that are playing by the books. Thank you. Okay. Any other council members? Um, Saturday was the uh, community pregnancy clinics. Uh, ladies tea it was fabulous. At least 150 women were there. And a um, little personal here, Sarah. Russell is going to be working there one day a week now, so she will be, is it ultrasounds she'll be working on mostly? So I think that's a fabulous situation. There were babies there that have gone through the clinic, the mommies went through the clinic, so it was just a great event to see new life and to have Sarah working in our community, it's exciting. Any other items? That ends the regular part of the agenda. We do have an executive session. Uh, estimated to last probably 15 minutes to 20 minutes on property acquisition with no uh, action to follow. So I would ask for members of the public and staff to clear the chambers. Can we have a uh, two minute bathroom break? Pardon? Bathroom break. Two minutes. We shouldn't, it, this shouldn't take very long. Uh, Mr. Knight, would you be willing to stay in case we have some questions for you? And Mr. Dunn and Mr. English, please.
Thank you. This, this one's a pretty no-brainer. I have to get in on that. You bet. Okay, we are coming back in, back into regular session, 7:27 in the evening. Uh, just a note for the record, uh, Councilman Shoemaker did have to leave for another engagement prior to the executive session, so was not present for the executive session. Uh, there being no other items before us this evening. Mr. I, Mayor, I move we adjourn. I've got a motion and a second for adjournment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We are adjourned. Can I get a second, John? Uh, John. Do you have an iPhone? I don't have an iPhone. Okay. Never mind. Jim? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no, I was going to show. I, I found a great case. Oh, you did? It is waterproof uh, to two meters. It's dustproof. It's I heard it. I heard those impact resistant. Yeah.